Good morning, students. This is Mr. Boscarini. And for our unit on forces, today's lesson will going to be about Newton's second law of motion. In previous videos, we have explored what is a force, how we can measure a force, and what is the effect of forces when they are balanced. And that is what we call Newton's first law of motion. Today, we're going first to see what is the link between mass and this new concept, inertia. We're going to see, if this is, will be mostly in class, how we can find the resultant force. So what happens when you have more than one force acting on an object? And what is really the, the main focus of today's lesson? Use the equation that will link force, mass, and the acceleration of an object. It is everyday experience that if we have an object with a big mass, it's difficult to, uh, if it's not moving, it's difficult to move it. Now, even if it's on wheels, even if you um, try to decrease as much as possible the friction with the ground, it's always very, very difficult to put into motion. It's also very difficult once that object is moving to stop it from moving. In general, we can say that an object with a bigger mass will change its state of motion. We, that means either start to move or stop to move, increase its speed, decrease its speed, or even change direction with a greater difficulty than an object with a smaller mass. Based on this concept, uh, Newton introduced this idea of inertia which in Latin is a way of saying the laziness, how sluggish something is. Now, when you say we, you have a lot of inertia, it means it's difficult to, let, to make you do things. So an object with a large inertia will be difficult to change its state of motion. In physics, we say that the mass of an object is the same thing as its inertia. This is more readily understood if we take, for example, the forces that we can apply on a skateboarder. So let's imagine we have two skateboarders, one of your friends and Eddie the Elephant. And we know the main difference between the two is that Eddie the Elephant has a much larger mass than your friend. So we can say that Eddie has a much larger inertia. Now, assuming that Eddie enjoys going on a skateboard and that we find a skateboard which is sturdy enough for Eddie, let's imagine that you want to apply a force. Now, you push your friend. You're applying a force on him. The result will be if he was not moving, he will start to move. So, he will increase its speed. And how do we call that? We call that acceleration. So, to the force, corresponds an acceleration. That acceleration will be in the same direction as your push. Now, if you apply the same push on Eddie the Elephant, so you see I represented that with two arrows of the same size, okay, it's pretty obvious that maybe you'll be successful. successful. You'll be able to start Eddie moving, but it's also obvious that he will have a much smaller final speed. So that means a much smaller acceleration is way smaller than the one before. And this is true when you want to start something moving. So if you want to accelerate that object, you want to start from rest and you want to increase its speed. How about the opposite? So let's imagine your friend is moving at a constant speed towards you. Maybe it's not the best way to stop a skateboarder, but still it's something which is feasible. You can try to apply a force in your friend and you can try to stop him. Um, and again, this is possible because your friend doesn't have a large mass and we're assuming he's not moving at, at such a high speed. Now, if we have, on the other hand, Eddie the Elephant with the same speed as your friend, and he has a much larger mass. What would be the effect if you try to stop him? 
this is definitely not something you want to try. I mean, if you have an elephant on a skateboard moving towards you and the elephant doesn't know how to stop the skateboard, probably it's not the best idea to stand in front of the elephant and try to stop him with your body. And why is this? Again, the, meaning, the reason is the different mass between the two objects. So, we can try to uh, repeat this kind of experience, of course, without using elephants. And when we see that, so we already established there is a relationship between the force you apply, actually the resultant force you apply, and the corresponding acceleration. There is a relationship between the resultant force you apply to an object and its mass. And both relationships are uh, of a direct proportionality. We can measure that. Actually, it has been done several times, and it has been done several times by Isaac Newton. So, what he wrote is again in Latin, because you know he wrote his book in Latin, and this is what he said Mutatione motus proportionalem esse vi motrici impresse, et firi secundum lineam rectam qua vis illa imprimitur. And again, it, it sounds very, very difficult. But what it says is that the change in motion, and change in motion means acceleration, it's proportional to the resultant force. V is the force acting on the object, and it's on the same direction. And this again gives you the idea of vectors. It's not only the amount, it's also the direction. So both the force and the acceleration are vectors. Now, luckily for us, we can represent the same law with a very, very simple relationship. And this is our relationship. This is actually one of the most famous equations in physics. And let's read it together. It says F, which stands for force, usually measured in Newton, is equal to the mass measured in kilograms of the object, times its acceleration, which is measured in meters per second to the minus 2. F equals m times a, or simply F equals ma. This is a form that we'll find, as I told you, it's one of the most famous relationships in physics. Not only, it also gives us a relationship between force in Newton's to other physical quantities that we've met before. We can use this formula to give a definition of a Newton, because we can say that one Newton is the force needed to make a mass of one kilogram accelerate at one meter per second squared. And this is, of course, if I give you the mass of an object, and I gave you the resultant acceleration, and you want to find what is the resultant force, the total force acting on this object. But of, in other cases, we might want to find the mass of the object or the acceleration. And this is a typical case where we can use, again, the magic triangle, as you can see here. Force on the top, mass acceleration on the bottom. So let's start with the simplest case want to find the force. Let's imagine we have an object with a mass of 10 kilograms and it's undergoing an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. We want to find the force. So, I'm going to move my hand, cover the force, and we get the formula mass times acceleration. So, 10 times 2 gives me a force of 20 newtons. What if I want to find the acceleration? Actually, this is the most common case. Most of the times, I know the force acting on an object, I know the mass, I want to find the acceleration. So again, I'm moving my hand, this time I'm covering the acceleration, and what I get is that the acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. So for instance, if I have a mass of 20 kilograms, on which it's acting a resultant force of 100 newtons, I do 100 divided by 20, and I get a resultant acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Finally, and this is a very, very common case again, if I want to find the mass, 
you know we can measure the mass directly with a balance if we have an object at hand. But another very common way to find the mass of an object is to apply a known force on it, measure its acceleration, and from there to find the mass. So moving our hand, mass is given by force divided by acceleration. So let's imagine we have a resultant force of 30 newtons, which is uh, producing an acceleration of 6 meters per second squared. I do 30 divided by 6, so I know at this point that the mass of the object is 5 kilograms. We're going to do many more exercises in class about force mass acceleration, and later we'll see the third and final uh, law of Newton. But for today, that's all from Mr. Boscarini. Goodbye.